Hi, everybody. Welcome to this week's call. My name is Lee Honish. Welcome to your distressed property, uh, monster marketing, advocate marketing, all things distressed in the wonderful world. I am joined, as always, by the uh, top mitigation company owner on the planet, uh, the number one broker out in the Ventura Valley, David Bartels. How are you today, David? I'm doing wonderful. Thank you. How are you? I'm great. And the reason I give such an introduction and the reason I structured that, even though we're doing uh, a coaching call for our students, we're recording the content. Today, we're going to talk about content a little bit more because people woefully lack content. So I've got some of David's content up. I've got some of my stuff up. We're going to do some graphic representations. We actually shot video um, for the coaching students. Feel free to go to the uh, coaching calls page. Um, for those of you listening to this as a podcast, Again, here's your opportunity to follow me or David on social media. You'll find a copy of this video there. We share it openly. And that's kind of the point of this. This is content at the end of the day. Um, and it's crucial, right? The product that we're pushing right now, David and I work with distressed properties. Can you kind of give an overview on this topic, David, just talking in general of the importance in the digital age of creating any kind of content for whatever story you're telling. Well, if you have a better mousetrap, it doesn't mean people are going to be at a path to your door to buy it. You still got to go out and sell it. So content really creates a way for people to be able to find you, to discover you, um, and then to ultimately want to interact with you. It's a way for you to gain trust, build relationships, and establish yourself as an expert that might be able to assist them. Absolutely, and I completely agree. Ooh, looking back when I was 240 pounds there in that photo, David, very bad photo of me, I digressed. <laughs> um, now that I'm back to 200 pounds, wow, how did I get so far out of hand? Um, first and foremost, let's talk about your website for just a quick second here, David. Let's talk about the importance of a basic website. So we're on the Home Loan Advocates website. First of all, give David a call, 805-413-8000. Anywhere in the United States, if you have a distressed property and you need a solution, um, period. It's just that simple. But let's talk about the importance of the content you're putting on the first page of telling your story as a mitigation company. What are we looking at here? Well, basically, we're wanting to you know, offers, well, you know, the .com site is different from the .org site. So if you go to the .com site, it's really, um, it's, it's a little broader. It's really, it's focused on agents who submit short sale negotiations, short sales that need negotiation to us. Um, but it also, in case um, consumers um, find their way there, it's also a, it's also consumer friendly. There's, you know, nothing about making money as a result of helping homeowners or that kind of thing. It's really informational based. So what I find is that, you know, we have a new website that's in the can ready to go. I just have to finish, you know, testing it. But the, but what we're, what we're finding is that when you make contact with people, you'll notice that, at least I noticed that I don't really give business cards away anymore. So right. what, what, what happens is, is that, you know, after they meet with you, they take your business card and very often what they do is they go Google you and they search for you and they want to find out whether or not you're legit. And they want, they don't want to take your word for it. They want, they want third party validation that uh, you are somebody, you are the person that you say that you are. And that's really what a website does. It's basically an introduction to you. And then you can, it can at, at its minimum and at its best, it's really a tool that you can use in order to leverage that experience, to capture leads, to generate business, and to advance your professional endeavors. I would expand upon it since I build a lot of websites for clients. I've come to the conclusion that the business card might theoretically be irrelevant at this point. Um, I think that a website itself, much like what you're talking about here, your website is now your digital business card. And uh, recently interviewing a couple of people that I was going to do marketing work for were explaining to me, well, I've got something on Realtor.com. I've got something on Zillow. You know, I don't, I don't know if I really need a website or I need a squeeze page or I need a funnel or I need any of this. And my answer to that was, 
So you're going to put a potential buyer or seller into a fly trap like realtor.com and Zillow. Um, you're allowing them to fly into free space where in theory, right? You could get snagged by another agent, right? Isn't at the end of the day, you're a former Zillow guy, David. Um, maybe you can explain the Zillow format for people who are thinking of investing in Zillow instead of building their own infrastructure. Well, you know, the first thing is that there are agents around the country who swear by Zillow that, you know, that think that they, you know, that it's a very effective way to generate leads. And then there's others that that don't. I'm in the don't category. I, I, I'm not really a big fan, mostly because of my personal experience. I mean, I've been, um, I love the concept of Zillow. I mean, on paper, it's something that looks really good that you pay them money and they do the marketing for you. And then you, you know, whatever leads are generated based on their massive, you know, attraction that they offer consumers, which is data basically that they aggregate from real estate agents who give it to them and then make us pay to generate the leads from it. But what they what they've done is that they they're basically selling territories and you pay a bunch of money in exchange for the leads. And my experience is that I paid a bunch of money and I didn't get a bunch of leads. I got some leads, but I also found that there was significant competition to those leads. And talking to people who um, who continue to do Zillow, they're they're saying their conversion rate is about one in ten, which is really good for an internet lead, by the way. If you're willing to, you know, pay the premium to be able to do it, I wasn't. I've opted to basically generate my own leads and take that for me, which would be about three thousand dollars a month for Zillow leads. I've decided to use that to reach a broader audience and generate um, more and better leads. So discussing this from a jumping off point, and I would recommend this to everybody, we'll get to all the questions at the end um, from the coaching room and we'll go back and go through it. But from just a jumping off standpoint, your business card or your connection point when you meet somebody as a distressed agent, or for any of you listening who don't do distressed properties, the basic would be a fairly solid landing website page with your information validating who you are, possible testimonials, um, information on how to contact you directly. Um, is that a pretty clean spot for all agents to start at? Yeah, everybody, you have to have a third party. So, I mean, listen, you need to, from a starting point, what you need to do, you need to do two things. Number one is you need a basic website. Now, listen, there are a thousand people that give you a website for free. Maybe your MLS, certainly Zillow will give you one for free. There are a lot of free, very basic websites that are out there. You know, nobody has an excuse not to have a website. Now, those websites are gonna be nothing more than placeholders. You're, they're just going to be, you know, this is who you are and you've got, and unless somebody's looking for you, they're never ever going to find you, okay? But yeah. you, but nonetheless, there will be people that look for you and you wanna have at least that. And then the other things are really the basic things that you want to do is you want to go to Zillow and you want to set up your, your free page register as an agent, or, you know, if you're licensed and you set, you set that up so that you got a presence um, on Zillow, then you want to do that on realtor.com. And then you, you want to do that on Google. You want to create like a Google page. You want to create a free page on Facebook. You want to, you, you know, maybe even Yelp. You want to, and you want to at least establish yourself. And if you're not part, if you're not the broker, and you, you know, if you're the brokerage, you you do it as your brokerage. If you're a, if you're the team lead, then you 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 build it as your team. And if you're an individual, for me, my in, I do both the brokerage and the individual. And I'm David Bartels Dash Realtor. So you know, so I think it's important to have, you know, to have as many footprints in the sand as you can get and the more places, the more footprints you have, the easier it is for somebody to eventually cross your path. And ultimately those are considered backlinks and they backlink into your website. Can't stress it enough. Um, I was recently hired by a scooter shop here in lovely Oceanside, California, who had a website and they're doing all these wonderful things, a horrible location. But when I went to meet with them, 
they just kept saying SEO, SEO. And I want to make this clear for everybody. I'm a guy who does direct marketing. That's my bread and butter. I do marketing. Um, don't get caught up in these words of SEO and SMM. And like you will wind up spending tens of thousands of dollars learning that it's not hocus pocus. It's driving people at one spot. It's creating a funnel. Ultimately, I'm going to show you the end product of what David's driving me at, um, which is for somehow for me to get onto a list defined as a buyer or a seller, because he has that in place. That's the way I build it for my clients, depending on what they want to do. Um, the next spot where David's going to try to scoop you up is his help you sell real estate site, right? So David has a help you sell full service website, is a home loan advocate page. I just like his help you sell uh, Facebook page to show you next because first of all, I want to make this clear because everybody does this. Oh, I only have a thousand people following me. I only have 2000 people following me. Doesn't mean Jack diddly squat to Facebook. Facebook operates in a completely different manner altogether as a business page. You can target data, you can share data. But if you look, here's David's own posting. Um, I'm assuming this is one of your agents since we don't have sound talking about the smart buyer program. But ultimately, you want me to click this link to get more information, and I'm going to take a wild guess. Fill out a form somewhere on this page, David. It gives you more information. And if Explains I request our smart more, buyer there program. we go. There's a squeeze page. And I assume that if I fill this out, within a few seconds, I should be receiving an email. Would I not? An email, a text, and <laughs> hopefully a phone call. <laughs> Good. That's the way it should work. Um, so let's talk about this. This is real time with branding. This looks like a blue screen. This is a pretty high production piece, David. Um, what's the response been on doing something with your uh, brand new program? Well, it's I'm the busiest that we've ever been in January and February. And um, we're doing more buyer transactions than we used to. We've got people, we've, we've actually had a couple of people call us um, that were not in our database and say that they've already found the house and wanted us to write the offer for them. And we've actually put a couple of transactions in escrow and never saw the house, never met the client, um, you know, until we, until after we had written the offer. And so, so I'd say it's going pretty well. We've only, I've only published this uh, two, three, four weeks ago. Yeah. Oh, January 20th. January, January so, so 20th. About three weeks ago. Okay. So, and I'm going to take a wild guess because I know how you operate. And we're going to talk about it a little bit more about the difference between boosting, targeting. What makes Facebook unique is you can actually target your locations. And we'll get to that in a brief moment. But based on your investment, on your boost, and clearly on the video, right? We're, this is a production piece. Has this mm -hmm. returned dollar for dollar or better? Oh, way better. Way better. And I, mean, I know that every listen, I created I created five videos this day, the day that we did this. I created five vid videos, which included, you know, the cameraman, all of his equipment, all the post production, eighteen hundred dollars. Great deal. Great deal. No, I have no don't idea. Worry for everybody I, who... I know it took him days afterwards to do you know, to edit it and everything to get it right. That and that was a lot of takes to get it where we were close. And I want to make it clear for everybody, I'm going to show you lower cost means for doing it. If you do have the budget, I highly recommend shooting four or five or six videos of you explaining distressed properties. Hey, here's the breakdown. Here's what the bank's telling you here. Like you can do these things. And if you can't go to Fiverr and find somebody to make a video for you with your logo in the background, there aren't, there are a lot of inexpensive options for creating content. But the biggest thing that David's doing with this page, he's branding this page. He's branding help you sell full service realty so that when I Google it, this is one of the things that shows up. And what's really important to remember, especially with Facebook, it's got to have content. It will not be nice to you if you don't put content. Um, I like this one a lot. I like joining this neighborhood favorites program that you had up uh, in February on February 10th. This is brilliant. Whether or not anybody sees it, uh, I don't know if any if any of you have seen Super Size Me Too, um, but there was a really interesting thing with a, a marketing company on it. Uh, it's Morgan Spurlock again, except this time he does chicken. 
but he discovers the psychology of marketing. So just by David putting up this banner, I'm gonna teach you guys some real quick psychology of marketing by saying that he's in the running to vote for him for a neighborhood favorite. You know what that makes him already? A neighborhood favorite. This is actually brilliant branding. You didn't really have to do anything here, did you? I mean, other than a post with a picture? Yeah, that's right. And, 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 but we, you know, but you have to, we send this to our database, we put it on social media, right. we keep, and, you know, we repost it. And, you know, we'll, and what's going to happen now is that we're going to get more specific. So this link takes you to a generic favorites page. So the next thing that we're going to do is take them right to us where they can, where they can recommend us. So that's going to take place probably tomorrow for the last 10 days of the campaign. And I'll say it again, this creates credibility in you just by being a part of these programs. And every program actually has, uh, every city has some kind of program or you can join local city programs. Um, okay, uh, a meme, I'm gonna guess this started off on Instagram based on the way it's posted, but again, Instagram is owned by you uh, is owned by Facebook. So here is just a basic meme, but the most important part, you're actually branding yourself with Voltaire, which is kind of brilliant in a really remarkable way. And I don't know if people actually get that. When you put up famous quotes or memes by famous people and you drop your logo, you're associating yourself with that individual. Um, again, doesn't cost anything to post these things. Uh, here's a simplified marketing. Is this going to take me 20 years, squeeze pages? Well, or is this an article? It. Just an article, I think. <laughs> I, just, I don't it's know. just I content. Don't I have no. I know you don't. I but I want to make it clear to I've everybody. Seen David has. I'm seeing this for the first time. <laughs> David has a third party virtual mm -hmm. assistant. And if you can afford it, feel free. Uh, I'll give you places where you can go and find people to do this kind of work. They're very hard to find. The good ones are really hard to find, and the really good ones will charge you money. I'm one of the really good ones, and I charge a lot of money. Um, so I can safely tell you that. But I want you to see that there is constant posting. But of look content. at our just sold there. Go to that just sold post right there. Now look, scroll up to the copy. We're not, you got to get to the copy above it. There you go. There you so go. let me get all of it up. For we, you. We tell the story. That's what people want to read. They want to know. They don't care that we just had a brag post. We just sold. They want to know what the backstory is. And so we take the time to write a story about every transaction that we close and share it when we when we do our just listed or just sold. So again, carrying this back for all of you doing distressed properties and why you guys are probably having problems on conversion going to the front door, you're meeting with them, you're connecting and bonding, but they go and look for you online or Facebook or a website or something, and they're not finding a story to back that up. And I'm just telling you this, you need a website to back it up. Uh, it's just kind of the, the way it works, which takes us to down and dirty content. This, what you're listening to if you're on the podcast or watching the video or even for the coaching students re-watching, this is just content from me and David to brand our product. Right now we're acting as coaches in the field of distressed properties. Again, it's congruent to our overall message of working in real estate or being a real estate marketer, in David's case, being a mitigation company or a top broker, but it gives us the opportunity to remarket content that we've used. So I wanna show you a couple of different posts to show you how kind of Facebook reacts and why it's important to know what you're doing. What you're looking at right now is the same video that you guys all saw at the end of the year of me doing the unstuck yourself guide. I just posted it to this page. It only reached 26 people. I didn't share it. I didn't boost it. I didn't put any bells or whistles. I want to make it clear. I have a thousand followers on this page. Now, when I worked my voodoo magic that so many of you seem to be aware of, um, it reached 19,000 when I reposted it and I re I shared it to groups. I engaged it differently and I reached 19,000 people. So you're asking yourself, how's that possible with only a thousand followers? 
Well, if I take my content and I share it on Facebook for free in groups, and I'm going to show you a couple more examples of it coming up, I'm now engaging exactly my crowd. And the minute somebody likes it, looks at it, it's going to show up in their timeline. And what you're looking for are numbers like this. I want 19,000 people. I want 135 people to click on the learn more button. I want that to happen. Which takes me to the last couple of weeks of what David and I did. I thought we did really great videos, right? We did the 2020 marketing plan. And the reason I'm showing you this, this one I actually paid for a boost, okay? Because I wanted to test something. So I paid for a boost. Um, it only reached a thousand people. I didn't spend a lot on the boost because I think based on the amount of content I put out, I can't be spending with the number of clients I have, I can't be spending five to $10 for each and every one of my clients. So I went with the maximum I think I would have spent, which is about $5 if I were gonna boost, which would be good for about three days. And it reached a thousand people and had seven engagements. And I would say that's pretty successful. Now, this is the one we did last week um, that David and I did last week. And I did this myself. You can see I shared it to 175 targeted select real estate groups. It reached 6,000 people and had 286 engagements. So targeted information based on a very, very specific story. And I got a higher engagement rate. I mean, it's, I'm not giving you guys, you know, the farm here by saying, but the reality of this engagement rate to this number of people is unheard of. And that's because these are targeted shares of this particular podcast. And at the end of the day, what did I really target? David, all of his businesses, his phone number, and my phone number. I branded the crap out of us. And it's just audio with a picture of me and David that I literally did with Microsoft Movie Maker Pro. I didn't, you know, I'm not using high-end tools here. I just took the audio right off this call. And then I hit a button so that it would make it into um, closed captions so that people who don't have audio on can see that it's audio of us talking. I can't dispute these results. I reached 6,000 people and I got 286 people who clicked on the, you know, on one of the links to learn more about us. So I did my job in branding David and myself. Now this goes a step further. This is uh, one of the lead funnels for Sharon, I've talked about her a couple of weeks ago, who once again yesterday told me she was way too busy and that we somehow need to turn off this funnel. This is somebody she got last night, right? Looking for a five and three and asking if it's still available and looking for her to do business. I have not done a single post on any of my clients' sites through traditional sources in three or four months, but because I get things to such a viral nature by sharing because this is how Facebook works. And it just is. Um, these funnels don't ever turn off. Like this is almost a never ending gobstopper. The other thing I wanna show you before we get back to all this, and I'll talk about David again here in just a brief second in his content, David and I podcast. This is my production company, Perfect Blue Studios. Um, we've done 437,956 downloads uh, in the last year. They keep a year to date. They actually took off plays, which kind of bums me out. So I can't track iHeartRadio anymore, which would be about another 300. We're on track to do 2 million downloads of our content this year. And I don't care what the content is. I wanna make this clear, okay? The content can be about distressed properties. It could be you about a, being a short sale expert. It can be Dave. David right now is doing a podcast and getting branded as that guy, right? These numbers don't lie. If people are downloading them, people are liking them, and people are following them, David and I are getting branded being associated with this studio, right? And for our downloads and our leads, which takes me to squeeze pages. And I'm going to show you some of David's. We, I showed you David's tomfoolery here. So if I were to fill this out before I show you guys how I do mine, I would wind up getting an email that looks something like this. I am in David's email funnel. This uh, is a correct. Just went out this and by the way, for everybody, yes, it did. And by the way, for everybody, this is the correct way to do it. So if you want to pay attention to see how a good email works, I'm not outing David because this is just him showing off. 
I don't even think this is a house that's available, is it? You're just checking in on me, uh, right? It's just the house. Just a house, this is, right? This is our newsletter. And this is the part that kills me. People put links on emails, right? So I filled out one of David's forms. Uh, I told this to somebody yesterday. They go, well, how aggressive is David? I said, David is more aggressive than me when it comes to follow-up. I said, I'm, I'm aggressive. I like something every couple of weeks. I said, David, right out of the gate hits you. Within a week, he hits you. He hits you again within a week. Then it cycles out to a couple of weeks, then to a month. And like you have a really smart cycled program built into your CRM on follow-up boss. Right. Um, exactly. But what I find most important about all of this, all of these links mean something, right? I mean, I'm yeah. actually going to go somewhere. We've done this on previous calls where I'll open an email like this and go, what are they pointing me at? Like they'll, they'll take me off of this to a realtor.com ad. Or, or article why would you do that why why would you do anything other than go through this stuff i assume that if i click on any of these i'm going to wind up somewhere backing your grips this isn't going to take me to a third party page that i don't know about no it probably oh, will i'm but... right it no it takes you it's all your stuff david yeah, it's all your what? article and it's all branded yeah yeah but look it's got a q a and then i will get a notification that you clicked on it and that i should call you Right. <laughs> and if you answer those and you questions, want my comments. and then you answer those questions, I'll get all those too. Perfect. And that way it starts to value it and my engagement rate. It's really smart marketing, by the way, for everybody wondering how that's done. But that's how it should be. Normally, when I click something like this off of somebody's page and I get lots of realtor stuff, um, it'll take me to a Zillow article or a Market Watch article. That doesn't help you. This is David's branded page where he puts up his articles. At the top, he's branded. In here, he's branded. Here's his engagement information, all of his submit. And it's That's powered by home action. Yeah. yeah, there you go. There's Somebody a asked me how uh -huh. much, how much I have 14,000 people in my database. Well, just shy of 14,000. Right. Somebody asked me how much it costs for them to put this newsletter together and send it for me. <laughs> answer forty four dollars a month unlimited yeah. number of and right. they did now i had to go in there and customize but i didn't even i have the option to pick the articles i don't even bother they just send me a note saying four days your newsletter's going up i just make yeah. sure they have all the names and then they pick it i don't even care what they send i know it's going to be gentle and it's going to be friendly and if people click on it then i will uh then I'll try to read the title of the article and figure out what that means to where they might be in the buying cycle. Right. So la and last month I, I had, I had a, a, one of our articles where what you need to know before buying a bigger house or something like that. So if you clicked on that, I just assumed that you were thinking about upsizing, moving up. And so I wanted to talk to you about that. I bet. So I happened to I bet. I bet. I, 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 top of the list. Right. <laughs> and so I had a handful of people, not a lot, but I had a handful of people clicking that article and they got a series of emails and phone calls from us um, to follow up. Some some of which we connected with and said, Yeah, call us in a couple of months, and some we didn't connect with, but none hung up on us or yelled at us and told us to stop calling. Right. And I don't know why everybody gets hung up about it. Oh, they might call me. Why, why would I want to do any of that? Which kind of takes us into capture pages in general. Like, okay, so you've got this version. This is what you get if you type in Hanish.com right now because I'm working on a new website. But I don't want to lose out on contacts. This is Wufu. I've talked about it a million times. They have free to paid programs. I have the paid program because I can incorporate uh, sales platforms and I can customize them. I don't even see the point in customizing them generally. I just use the template. But I can get this information. This information is sent over to my email. My email will then create it into a database log. And I will know that somebody's interested in one-on-one. -on -one. But ultimately, that leads back to the thing we're talking about here. Email marketing. Okay. I've said it before. I go to MailChimp. And I've also said it before with Sly Broadcasting, especially if you're collecting information from the web. So we started this off by discussing creating a backstory for you to go to the front door, right? And let me show you 
one of David's back doors, homeloanadvocates.org. This is, at the end of the day, a platform for a story for you that are home loan advocates like myself uh, or David's agents to go to the front door and be able to point people at them. Um, it's crucial, right? So before you even get into these weird follow-up cycles, this is all the front end. And it all ties into the back end of being able to slide broadcast or being able to do uh, uh, an email blast. Why don't you talk a little bit about your follow-up sequences? I personally don't see any lead as, I was telling this to someone yesterday that I'm uh, planning on working with. I don't see any difference. I think it's all data collection. I don't care if they're renters. I don't care if they're buyers. I don't care if they're sellers. I don't care if they want mobile homes. I don't care if it's a distressed property, a divorce. You're just a different you know, column of what I'm gonna send to you content wise and constantly follow up with you. But again, the constant branding and rebranding, uh, I'll give everybody the psychology on this since I've had to read all the books on the topic, five to 15 times. The reason you guys aren't getting higher conversion rates, you're not following up five to 15 times. Uh, David hears it all the time. I hear it all the time. Oh, I've been following you and David on the podcast for years now. Okay. <laughs> what, what took you so long? Um, but that's just the way it is with human psychology. Uh, why don't you talk a little bit about follow-up, David, and the importance of really defining each category and your own follow-up cycles. All right, so everybody's a lead, um, but they may not be ready to do a transaction today. And what our job to do as marketers, and that's the way I see what we do as marketing. You know, we, you know, I had this conversation with a seller last night. He said, well, what are you going to do if I sell my house? I said, well, I'm not going to sell your house. They said, what do you mean you're not going to sell my house? I said, well, I said, I don't sell houses. You hire a, a real estate agent for two reasons and two reasons only. And one of them is not to sell your house. Reason number one is that you're hiring them to get you massive exposure for your property. So anybody anywhere in the world that's looking for a house like yours will see it and it'll be properly presented. And the second reason that you hire an agent is to make sure that you are properly and effectively represented in the negotiations that will ensue when somebody's going to buy your house. So the question is, if you're not going to sell my house, who's going to sell my house? And the, and the answer is, well, the job of the marketer is to drive people through your front door. If an agent is telling you that they're going to sell your house, they're misleading you because the truth of the matter is, and think back to when you bought this house, nobody sells you a house. The house sells the house. Either the job of the marketer is to get them in the door and then that the house either connects with that buyer or doesn't connect with that buyer. And if they can, if, the, if somebody gets emotionally connected to the house, that's when all the magic starts to happen. And if somebody wasn't emotionally connected to the house and I use my three best closes to sell them the house, the reality is, is that between now and the 30 to 45 days that we're going to close, they're going to come out of the ether and we're going to have nothing but headaches and a very high probability that it's going to get unsold and we're going to have to start again, but this time in a lesser position than we started. How's that for an explanation? Perfect. That is a perfect explanation. Um, I would go even a step further because this came up with a couple of my clients. So many of you know that I turn on this infamous Facebook funnel that doesn't seem to work via ads or posting in the marketplace anymore. It's this magical. I want you to look. This is the person who told me she was too busy. Almost all of these things that you're seeing here are people who've given up their name, phone number, and email address. And this goes on for months and months and months. And I recently asked her to send me an updated list of all their phone numbers to Sly Broadcast to them all, to which I got a response of, no, that's too many calls. And I think people get caught up on this. These are renters uh, and buyers. They're kind of a mix these days. Um, most people get a bulk of renters, but what everybody forgets is anybody looking for housing is somebody interested in real estate. And what I've discovered by doing this funnel now for the better part of, I don't know, six months to a year, I think I started in July with most of the funnels. Um, I can safely tell you this, asking these people to qualify and sending them off to your lender, these people don't know 
that they can buy at the same prices that they want to rent for in these same cities, which is mind boggling to me. They're just, people have now gotten into this mentality that the only things available that are in their price range are for rent. And in some cases that's very true, but they used to have, the way I target, she's looking for a five bedroom, three bath house. Why wouldn't you try to buy it? Uh, well, I have bad credit. Well, what makes you think you can rent? Have you tried to pre-qualify? Have you pulled credit? It, it, it is again about qualifying and ultimately having that conversation. And if they give you an email and a phone number, just like David was talking about earlier with his uh, other program, if they show interest, why wouldn't you call them and have that conversation and put them in a different list on a different follow-up campaign and put them as a highest priority, especially if you're working with buyers, for God's sakes. Um, I wish it were that way for sellers off the internet. Sellers are different. They just click and fill out forms. They wanna know home loan values. Uh, I wanted to show this because this is the one that I actually run. I tend to do articles just like David. This is my own page. You're not going anywhere else. This is an article about people missing car payments. I am looking for distressed properties. I showed this off last year, but throughout it, it talks about doing loan modifications. Guess what? When you click that form, you're going to my squeeze page with my information. <laughs> and by the way, I'm a homeowner advocate. Guess what? I work with David. I'm not doing anything crazy here. It's all the same information we talk about week in and week out, right? Our alternatives to foreclosure. But anytime they click on a button, they're filling out info that's coming straight to me for me to contact them to get a free consultation. These things are crucial. I mean, it, it is all about data capturing so that I can go back to slide broadcasting, so I can go back to emailing them, so that I can continue the cycle. Did I miss anything from your perspective, David? No, the only, you know, like I've got a, I've got a rental right now that we're you know that we're putting people in we're getting a we're obviously going to get a bunch of leads for it and you know and so what happens so let's say we get 10 applications for it and we only we can only sell it to one person what what do we do with the other nine leads do we just scrap right. them and the answer is no no <laughs> i just put them i put them on a i don't put them I label them as a renter. I note where it came from. And then we market to them like they're a buyer, a future buyer. Right. The truth is most of the people that are in my database are not going to do a transaction for several years, probably. Because they're not, you know, people aren't doing transactions every year or two. They're doing every 10 or 12 years. And, you know, buyers are more likely to do a transaction sooner than the seller. But they're, so we don't know when they're going to strike. We don't know if, this is the year that they were going to rent one more year and they were going to buy. So we just do a 90 day drip and a 180 day check in call with all of those people, because the the secret to advertising and marketing in general is having the right message in front of the right person at the right time. And right. so when someone is clicking on a link like Lee's talking about and using the newsletter example that I, you know, we were showing earlier. When someone's clicking on a link, all those represent as clues, clues that they might be closer to doing that kind of transaction for this. And we might want to, to make sure that we check in. If I see somebody for the, if I see someone looking at houses on my portal or my subscription or my search site, I'm calling them because I'm making the assumption that they're one step closer to doing some sort of transaction. And I want to make sure that I don't miss the opportunity. So. Where I can't, I don't want to call everybody in the same period of time, and I don't try to call everybody every 60 days, but we do make sure that we're calling people who are active in our database because they have the highest probability of conversion. I agree. Um, and again, it's no secret for me and for what I build for my clients. Again, this is just an article that we talked about here on this call last year that I still use to this day about 7 million people being behind on their car payments. My guess is if you're seriously delinquent on a car payment, you're probably having difficulty making your house payment. So why wouldn't I take that same article? I gave where it came from, how I got it. I completely replicated it verbatim. And at the bottom of it, there is a link to the actual articles. So I don't have any problems with the Washington Post. But the articles here, 
But again, I inserted my own ads. I'm not going to send them to the Washington Post, much like David's newsletter. There's no secret here. These are pre-written articles, but it's his content and his advertising that's happening here. So it doesn't really matter how it happens. It's the story that you're telling and you're trying to get somebody at the right time who's, yeah, I'm behind on my car and maybe I do need help with my loan mod. Okay, I'll click the button and see what they have to say, right? This is straightforward. This is the same stuff you guys take to the front door. I'm not doing anything crazy here. I'm not. It's exactly the same stuff. It is the same stuff that is congruent with homeloanadvocates.org. The stuff that we profess to you, this is the stuff that I use. Uh, the other one that I like is we'll buy houses for cash. Um, I like home value. I've done those articles. I've done those pieces. My highest conversions really for social media for my clients uh, still seems to be really at the end of the day, the bread and butter and David's right. Facebook, website, squeeze pages, funnels, capture, Yelp, Google, Google Places, Google Maps, um, Angie's List, like anything you can think of almost, they're all crucially important. And, and you just got, you have to do them to create the story because I wanna get to this point. I just wanna be able to log into my account, right? For any one of my clients um, and do a blast. I mean, that's really ultimately what it comes down to Everything is managed by list or by my clients, right? Um, and it doesn't matter the number of contacts in it. Uh, here is our original uh, list. It still has 473 people that I've met with throughout the year. Some of these people have done short sales. Some of them have sold houses with this. It doesn't matter. As long as I once a month click back onto this and say, hi, this is Lee. I'm just following up. Do you or anyone you know still need help with a loan modification? Give me a call. Right, I can keep it as generic as possible. It's 400 people and I can click one button and I get a phone call every single time. That works and email works. David, give everybody your information. Well, you can reach me 805-413-8000, 805-413-8000. And you can obviously email me at david at homeloanadvocates.com. We would be a terrific resource for you if you were working on a short sale and you wanted somebody to do it for what is probably free because we figured out how to get the bank to pay us to do that work for you, which means we're doing the heavy lifting on the negotiations, the time consuming work that frees you up to go out and focus on doing what you should be doing. And that's generating income through buying houses, selling houses, listing houses, or helping other people um, buy houses. So David at homeloanadvocates.com, that's plural, David at homeloanadvocates.com or 805-413-8000. I'll make it real easy for all of you. Go to honish.com. Can't make it any easier than that. H-O-N-I-S-H.com. You will see this form pop up. If you're watching the video, it looks just like this. For those of you just listening to the audio, I would recommend going to social media and typing in either Lee Honish or David Bartels and watching this video. It should be out by Thursday. Uh, I know we'll drop the audio probably today and I'll try to get all the videos up by today so everybody can watch this, but watch the video, you know, glean some ideas. And if you're not gonna do it, call me and I will help you, okay? I do free one-on-ones because we've said it, 99% of what you do is free. So take advantage of free. That's Hanish.com. And we can find a solution for you that will work within your budget. 